Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today we're going to be doing an unboxing and overview of this ASRock Extreme 7 Gen 3 motherboard which supports Intel's second generation Core i3, i5, and i7 Sandy Bridge processors. Now for starters, let's take a closer look at some of the features from this board and uh, one of the first big ones is the Gen 3 moniker which means it has PCI Express 3.0 support. I actually have some uh, hardware switches that are integrated onto the board that will enable that. Bear in mind that you will need a forthcoming Ivy Bridge CPU from Intel. So the current generation of Sandy Bridge CPUs have a PCI Express 2.0 controller uh, built into them which gives you 5.0 giga transfers per second. Once you can get an Ivy Bridge socket 1155 CPU you can drop that in and utilize PCI Express 3.0 which gives you essentially enhanced bandwidth of 8 0.0 giga transfers per second over your PCI Express bus. Now for those of you who are running some current gen cards, some PCI Express 2.0 cards, and who are interested in perhaps uh, two-way or three-way uh, SLI or Crossfire X setups, this motherboard does have an NVIDIA NF200 chip on board. If you're not familiar with that, it is a PCI Express bridge chip which allows you additional PCI Express lanes. Uh, the Sandy Bridge setup, or if you're using a P67 or Z68 right now, only gives you 24 PCI Express lanes with that integrated controller. The NF200 chip gives you more lanes, so you can actually run two cards at native uh, PCI Express 16 speed bandwidth. Or if you're running a three-card setup like they show here, you get 16, 8, and 8. Uh, also, you have digital power delivery to the CPU. Uh, you get V8 plus 4 power phase uh, delivery again there for CPU for overclocking. Gold caps, you get a full 6 serial ATA 3.0 ports, which we'll show you inside. Combo cooler option, which lets you use older CPU heatsink fans. And a, a Craftsman heatsink design, which I'll show you in just a sec. And now for some unboxification here. We have multiple boxes inside. Other boxes, there's the motherboard. Let's start off with the accessories though. There we go. No shortage of packaging here with this motherboard. All right. Now for starters, you get this little adapter here. Where this is actually a 3.5 inch uh, drive bay adapter for those of you with an external eh, 3.5 inch bay. That'll allow you to add a couple USB 3.0 ports to the front of your case, especially handy for those of us using older cases that haven't upgraded to ones with 3.0 on the front. And they also give you a 2.5 inch drive mount there on that bracket as well. So a nice little dual use item here and a 20 pin USB 3.0 motherboard connector, which you can plug into your motherboard, which is in a very convenient location on the motherboard itself but I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, we do have Virtue technology uh, with this Z68 board. It does allow for GPU switching. If you have a discrete video card plugged in, you can use that. You can also use the Virtue software to switch between that and your integrated GPU from your Sandy Bridge CPU, and uh, there are some benefits to that. ASRock uh, XFast USB technology pamphlet there. Tell you some more about their XFast USB ports. Of course, you get a software setup guide there, the green one, and you also get the full book here for the Z68 Extreme 7 Gen 3. And inside here, we also have, of course, our software installation and driver disks. Always best to download the latest drivers from the ASRock website. But keep that in hand, especially if you're installing Windows for the first time, so you make sure that your LAN card is recognized. Here are a couple power adapters that will take a Molex plug and convert it to a serial ATA plug for those who are using older power supplies. We have a couple bridges here, which are wrapped up. Let me just, there's an SLI bridge for those who will want to run two card SLI. You also get a three card port, bear with me here, these are taped up well, three card bridge I should say, or three wet SLI, there it is, this is a beefy bridge because the uh, slots on here are triple spaced, so 
This bridge is extra long to make sure you can set up your three-way three -way SLI on this board. All right, moving on to serial ATA data cables. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, and three of the six have L brackets on one, one end. The other three have straight plugs on all sides. You have a standard eighth inch audio cable there to plug in speakers. You have a rear panel. This is interesting. I believe this is a USB 2.0 first right there, and I believe this is an infrared header, if I can tell correctly from that motherboard connector. Of course, you get your input-output shield there for the back of your case with lots of color coding, so you can tell which ports are which. And then finally, you get a PCI Express bracket. This is for that 3.5-inch USB 3.0 uh, adapter that I showed you first with the accessories. You can plug that into a PCI Express bracket if you don't want to plug it into the front of your case. That's it for accessories. Let's move on to the motherboard itself. And here's a look at the motherboard itself. We're looking at the back right now. You can see there is a dark brown PCB and all of our heat sinks are mounted with spring-loaded screws for easy removal if it, that becomes necessary for you in doing your build. Here's a look at the front and I'm going to start off by pointing out our fan connectors for chassis fans. We have our standard CPU 4-pin fan header right there, a couple more three pin headers right above that, also got another three pin fan header right there next to this heat sink, and then finally down here at the bottom a three pin and a four pin, so plenty of fan connectors there for connecting your case fans. Now let's go over some details of the board, we'll start down here in the bottom right, and we can see some surface mounted buttons, we have a surface mounted reset and power button, so nice for doing a, an external build especially. We also have our front panel connectors right there uh, for speaker and front panel power and reset. Clear CMOS also have a surface mounted clear CMOS button. Next to that we have a, our Dr. Debug LED uh, that will give an LED readout as you're going through posts. So if it halts on anything there will be a debug code you can look at there to determine what might be causing the problem and help you get your rig up and running. Next we have some USB 2.0 ports. Uh, these are two port output headers, uh, or input output headers I should say, one, two, three, and four, so those will be able to control up to eight USB 2.0 ports on the front or back of your case. Uh, we also have an infrared four pin header out right there. Uh, again, those uh, chassis fan plugs uh, pin outs right there. A 1394 firewire port. Uh, next to that is actually a PS2 out, and here I need to correct myself a little bit because in our uh, accessories, I showed you this little port right there. That's actually a PS2 port. It connects via this little six pin uh, connector to the motherboard right there. So even though this motherboard doesn't have a legacy PS2 port on its inputs and outputs on the back that are hardwired, you can plug one in right there and give yourself some connectivity if you're using an older keyboard or mouse. Uh, up above that, we have another infrared out. We have an SPDIF uh, two pin out for the HDMI. We have a uh, comm header right there. And then finally, our front panel audio connectors down there in the bottom left for HD audio or AC97 audio for your front panel uh, speaker and microphone. Okay, let's uh, move on to our PCI Express area right here with all of our PCI Express plugs. Uh, actually, right up here at the top, you see a four pin Molex plug, and if you're going to be running Crossfire or SLI, you can plug that in to give a little extra juice to your PCI Express uh, bus, and that will allow you to properly set up your SLI or Crossfire X configuration. Uh, for starters here, I'm going to talk about our plugs that are wired for full connectivity, and that would be this one, this one, this one, and this one. I'm sorry, these two here and these two on top. So if you're going to run two card uh, SLI or Crossfire X, you'll want to use this one and this one which are triple spaced to give you plenty of uh, space there for big heat sinks or for additional airflow between the cards. And then you can use this uh, last one down here at the bottom if you're going to be running three card SLI or Crossfire X. Uh, we have another full wired 16 speed PCI Express slot right there. Uh, we have a single speed PCI Express right there. We have a legacy PCI slot right there. And then finally down here we have a uh, full length 16 speed slot but it is wired for 4 speed uh, so you can put an additional PCI Express device right there. Moving right along over here to the right we have our Z68 chipset heatsink there, Z68 chipset. 
controls a fair amount of our serial ATA ports over here on this side. The black ones here are serial ATA revision 2, 3 gigabit per second ports. Uh, the gray ones are all serial ATA revision 3, 6 gigabit per second ports. So you get lots of serial ATA revision 3 connectivity right there. For your SATA 3 ports, uh, you'll want to go with these. Those will be the fastest because they're controlled by your native Z68 chipset. The additional two, or the additional four ports here on the right are controlled by an AS Media controller, uh, which is integrated into the motherboard. Moving along up the side of the board, we have a, a USB 3.0 20-pin header right there near the front, so easily plug-inable to the front panel or front ports on your case. Above that, we have our 24-pin PC, 24-pin uh, motherboard main power connector. Next to that, we have our DIMM slots. Uh, supports dual channel, DDR3 DIMMs, uh, overclock speeds up to 2,133, and uh, four slots for up to 32 gigs total. That's if you want to spring for 8 gig DIMMs, which are finally becoming available, but still kind of hard to come by. And make sure you populate two of these uh, slots at once so you can take advantage of that dual channel capability. Next to that, we have our socket 1155 socket right there for your Sandy Bridge CPUs. Uh, right here you can see the um, sort of two mounting holes that they have at the four points on the board uh, here as well as up here. And that will allow you to put in an LGA 1156 or 1155 CPU heatsink fan or if you have an older LGA 775 CPU heatsink fan that you're really attached to, you can use that using those alternate mounting holes. Here we can see the heat pipe design between our two coolers for our chipsets as well as for our uh, CPU voltage regulation management area uh, and those have a heat pipe design running between them for maximum heat dissipation and there you can see our CPU VRMs and caps right underneath that heat sink. Up at the top here we have an EPS 8 pin motherboard power connector and that's to provide additional juice to the CPU. Definitely need to have that plugged in especially if you're going to be overclocking. And then finally here at the back, we can see our motherboard inputs and outputs. So for starters here, we have our RJ45 port there for gigabit LAN. We have USB 3.0 ports here, a couple down beneath. Uh, we have four video outs, and these are if you're going to be using the Sandy Bridge uh, integrated GPU. Got a D-sub uh, for analog out. We also have DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort. Uh, over here we have these red ports here which will basically give you enhanced power for when you're connecting devices to charge them such as a uh, smartphone or a tablet. Uh, so additional juice out of those red ports there. They are USB 2.0 as far as their uh, data speed. You also have a FireWire port, an eSATA port, another RJ45 port there for another gigabit LAN connection, a couple more USB 3.0 ports, and then finally your audio out right here which supports 7.1 channel HD audio uh, with a Realtek ALC892 audio codec. And that's going to wrap it up for today's overview of this ASRock motherboard. This is the Z68 Extreme 7 Gen 3. A great choice for those of you who are looking for forward compatibility. You will be able to drop in an Ivy Bridge 22 nanometer CPU into this 1155 socket once they become available. Bear in mind you may need a BIOS update. And for those looking forward to PCI Express 3.0 cards, which will probably be debuting next year in 2012, this board is forward compatible with PCI Express 3.0. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed today's video, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Newegg TV.